Hiya guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. So we have a box. It's Boxing Day. We have a box. Okay, so I have bought um, a new vice for the milling machine. So four inch AccuLock machine vice, plain. We'll get it out of the box. I'll show you what it's all about. And this is from Vivo. Um, it's a UK based website, I believe. Now, no sponsors ship. I wasn't sent this. I bought this or Santa brought it to me. <laughs> it was on my wish list and uh, my good lady wife bought it for me based on a link that I sent her. I've seen a few people looking at these vices and using similar looking vices. I thought I'd give it a go. It's a four inch vice. I typically use like a three inch um, tool maker's uh, vice, like a grinding vice. But this is a proper milling machine vice. We'll see how proper it is, how good it is as we go forward. So I'm going to do some rudimentary inspection on it. Uh, so first thing I've done is obviously take my other vice off the table. I've run my precision flat stones over the table, made sure there's no bumps, lumps, anything like that, given it a quick scotch bright, given it a wipe, degreased it, made sure it's nice and clean, uh, vacuumed out the slots, that sort of thing. Uh, it's nice to give it a birthday now and again, but uh, yeah, I did clean it up fairly well the other day when I uh, put my vice back on anyway, so there wasn't much to do. I've just uh, taken it out of the box, out of its plastic bag, put it on the table. First thing I notice is, I don't like the colour, but then that's just me. Um, I'm probably going to refinish it in the Walco Green. I think it'll look better on this machine. That's another story. Uh, I think they've gone for this. It's a similar colour to the Kurt Vices, and this certainly isn't a Kurt. So, what's my first impression? I bought a 4-inch vice. So I just put my scale on, and it's actually... Overall jaw width is 100 mil, so it's not a 4 inch vice, it's a 100 mil vice. But that's clutching at straws, it's close. What are we talking? Uh, 1.6 mil narrower. Okay, so I'm running my fingers over this, and although they've got ground chamfers all the way around, it's sharp. Everything's sharp, even the, the corners of the chamfers are sharp. And there's one on this back corner, it's particularly bad. Where they've ground the chamfer on, um, it's actually thrown a burr up on the top, so that's horrible. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is take it completely to pieces, go around, I mean even the edges of the casting here are rough and harsh, um, so I'm probably going to go around and just, you know, break edge all these nasty edges everywhere I see them. Um, and the same on all the jaws, everything, take it to bits, put it back together, make it what it should be and then give it an inspect as I reassemble. Another thing to note, I've just opened the vice right out. You can see the jaws hanging out the back here. And it's maximum jaw opening, 120 mil. So that's, yeah, that's great. Um, of course, there is an added facility on here. Let me just close that down and spin it around so you can see. On the back of the jaws are two more tapped holes on that end and this end here. It is possible to take the jaws off from the internal and put them, flip them onto the back and put them on the outside, which would give you the facility then, if you had a jaw sticking up here and a jaw sticking up here, you could put a plate on top and squeeze down onto that plate using the, the jaws on the outside of a plate without dropping it in the jaws and using the top of the vice as your, as your base, so to speak. So it's got, it's got scope, but then many vices do that nowadays. Um, let me just... You know, I, I can turn that lead screw by hand. I can't really feel it, but I can hear it. Oh, I can see it. Right, we do have a little side wobble in that jaw. It's not huge. I um, don't know whether to close it right up. Yeah, I mean, there is there is play in it. It's not a great deal. It's not a grinding vice. I'm used to my grinding vice having nothing. In fact, the further forward I come, let's just come a bit further forward, come into the normal sort of 50 mil range where I'd be using it more often than not. There isn't any play there. Okay, so that suggests that there's a bit of Bit more room in the guides at the back here than there is in the working area well that's good news 
really sharp. Just an oil, fine oilstone on these corners, I think. Although it doesn't, yeah, it's it's just a dead keen edge. But I think I would like to break them slightly. But that there, in fact, just doing that has taken that nasty burr off there. Anyway, so that said, take it all to bits. So I just uh, stripped it to bits. Um, with blue roll, bit of mess, let's just degrease grease now. Okay, already I can see it's tearing my paper to bits. Uh, yeah, bit of deburr to do. Oh, razor sharp edges on those tenons there. Okay, we've degreased it. I think I need to go over this with a file, doing all the sharp edges. Um, yeah, just breaking these edges. I mean, they have... Let me just put the lid back on my mess. They have chamfered it. But I think they did it with an angle grinder. Um, with a grinding wheel, not even a flat wheel, by the feel of it. Um, they haven't done these areas, they, but they have done around the outside. But I think they've done it with a grinding wheel, in a, you know, four and a half inch grinder, something like that. Certainly no care taken to... You know, remove sharp edges, sticky outy bits. They haven't done around the inside here. And obviously not around the top of the tenons or anywhere like that. So we're going to do that. So I've probably spent 20 minutes on that. I've gone over it with an oilstone. Um, I've deburred all the outside edges, all the edges of the channels, the holes. Everything's deburred, stoned over. All nice, no sharp edges on there now. And just... Make sure my surfaces are clean. And I'm going to pop that. Doesn't seem to hinge anywhere particularly. Right on the end here. Or right on the end there. Okay. Um, so... I suppose the next step is to do the same across the bed here because um, it, it's sharper on these outside edges so I'll do the same and then we'll um, probably whether I can clamp it to my table uh, run a clock around it just see how flat the base is in comparison to the ways we'll see okay so it's all stoned over oh I'm kicking my vacuum pipe um, so let's just bring the clock down to get a zero don't need a huge amount of preload on this. That's on a zero. Let's turn my feed on. Let's see how much run out we get by the other end. So it's dropped down about two lines on the clock at the moment. But it's holding. Okay. Was it just that far end was high? Because it doesn't seem to have moved in a long way. Let's just let's just re-zero that clock. It's zero from where I'm looking. Okay, let's do that again. So zero this end. Uh, maybe drop down one line. Uh, maybe one to two lines down. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're talking, we're talking about 20 micron at the moment. It's about 10 micron there. Coming back to zero. Maybe plus one. Okay, so I'm going to say this way, within about 20 micron. Uh, I wonder if I can... Just dropped in the hole. Why didn't I re-zero it? Let's just come off. No. Okay, let's let's get away from that hole. So zero there. It's gonna drop off the edge.
Oh, hello. Oh, I know what's going on. My lock has hit the bed. Okay, let's do that again. I was lifting the carriage off because my uh, my lock lever was hitting on the on the base. So zero there, line across. Okay, so we're maybe up. Yeah, maybe up. Point zero five millimeters. What I'm going to do is just check. Let's come off again. Let's reset a zero. But it's not my milling machine. A gib could do with a little tighten. Ah, there you are. So there's a little bit of rock in that bed. Uh, maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Zero. Well, I'm going to say that worst case is 0 0.05 millimetres, but I don't think it's as bad as that across there. Um, and we were within 20 microns that way, 50 microns that way. So it's not that bad. Um, yeah, it's better than I was expecting. So so far so good I'm um, just going to pop that clock out out of the way I think we'll put this fixture back on maybe tram it ok so uh, all stoned I had to fit the lead screw and the lead nut in first before I fit the fixture fixture is a good fit on the uh, tenons shall we say, yeah, you know they don't look very pretty but it is a good fit on them so that's, that's good news so it does locate it um, this fixture is a piece of cast. I'd have rather it been a solid piece, but it is a piece of cast. So with that said, um, when it's screwed down, I mean, it is a good fit. I mean, that, that's not down at the moment. It does need pulling down in. It's got end float this way uh, on the bolt holes. So I need to think about that, getting it central. And much the same when I bolt the uh, jaw on, this has got end float in the bolt holes as well. So I'll just try and middle for diddly it all up as they put it together but one thing I've noticed is that that's the original bolts that's supplied they only stick out about 8mm um, and I thought well that's in cast that's you know I'd rather have more than that maybe 12mm so I've got some longer M6 bolts which is what I've got in stock but these bottom out, out in the tapped hole in here um, just before they clamp so I think what I'm going to do to aid me in being able to use these bolts standard stock that I've got is just run the tap down these holes, the holes go right through the block but run the taps, the M6 tap down in deeper just so they can use the standard bolts I've got in stock I mean I think these are M6 by 30, M6 by 25 would have been ideal but uh, yeah I think these ones are you know M6 by 10 maybe 12 so I would have liked to have had you know 5 or 6 mil more thread at least engaged but these will do the job uh, so yeah tap the holes deeper so let's have a look at the hold down design. So we've got the lead nut here, uh, the pusher, puller, shall we call it. It's got a, a steep angle on this front face and you'll see a bit of grease on there, which is meant to be there. And we've got this back face, which is a slight angle. So in the, I've just stoned all this, in the moving jaw, all right, this is upside down as you can see, um, there is a ball indent very difficult for me to show down in here let's make sure that grease is in the hole I got half round a spherical indent and there is a ball or half ball which fits in that spherical indent and I don't know whether you can see but it rotates and swivels around in that in that pocket okay so the idea is that this face picks up on that ball like like so um, but as you can see there's a load of backlash in there at the moment there's a screw on the back here which um, comes out adjustment against this back face uh, to remove the 
that backlash that you just saw. So let's just pop it back in. OK. So we've got all that backlash in the jaw on the thread at the moment. So I just need to, first of all, find the right allen key. I think that was the one. And just wind this screw in. So let's bring it well back and we'll see it pull into position. Here it comes. Now that's tight. Now there'd be no backlash there. If I just crack it just a touch. And we should be able to feel where we are on this. Still slight backlash. We can just... I think that backlash now is what's in the lead nut. Just no, I don't want that tight. Yeah, you know, I may get a secondary grub screw in here to lock these two together. Okay, that's better. Right, so I've already adjusted the backlash out of the lead screw itself. So, uh that now is in position. So there's nothing holding the jaw down. But the force of the shape in the lead nut, if you put back pressure on, is always, you know, like squeezing up against a part, is always going to try and pull that jaw down so we don't get jaw lift. Now, there's no appreciable jaw lift there at the moment. They would be if I had more backlash in that screw. But it's not forcing it down to the point where it's trying to lock it out. So that, that's okay. I'm happy with that adjustment. So just need to stone. I've already stoned all this block as well. The underside of this had two uh, swirl marks in the guides that sit on this bed that were high points. When I run my oil stone over them, they, they shone up, oh, you know, real bright. So I had to go over those two, those two surfaces with an oil stone just so that there was no definite high spots on the underside of this moving jaw um, so that's that's sort of running slick now whereas before it would have been sort of sat on high spots at the back here so that's that's got to have improved it already let's get the other jaw in uh, we'll nip it up close the jaws and tap the outside edges excuse me the outside edges square to each other because there's a lot of play in them and then we'll open it back up and nip them down OK, so I've got a couple of clamp down bolts in the vise. Uh, set on zero that in. This nut on the left, as you're looking at it, is tight. That's actually come off the clock there. Maybe a little much. OK. Right, where are we? One line over that end. Let's go the other end. One to two lines over. Okay, let's come to this end, reset a zero. Yeah, a little bit over. Okay, let's come back on, reset the clock at zero. Which in my eye line is there. Why does it do that? <laughs> if I start the feed too fast, it doesn't like it. We're in the close territory now. Let's just nip this end of the vise. That's me pulling on the table with the spanner. Right, where are we? Plus six. Should have nipped it a bit more. Plus five. Plus six. Reset zero again because for some reason it is not playing ball. Let's just zero that. Okay. Some days you get it in seconds. Right, we're about 10 micron there. I'm going to nip those two bolts and I might have to just give them an, another nip. Reaching round the camera. 
Okay, they're pretty tight there now, so let's have another look. We're about three under. Between two and three. Okay, one under. So we're about 20 micron there. So I'm just going to give that side a little, nice, a little tap. Try not to hit the tripod. Okay, let's just quantify that. We're one line under. Gone a bit much. One over. Still one over. One over. One over. Okay, we got it, and the vice is tight. Uh, I think that was more luck than anything else. I was chasing around two lines, dogged them down, and it seems to hold now. So yeah, okay. So that's that's trammed in. That's pretty much how I do it. Straightforward enough. On a parallel, full width of the vice within ten microns, let's say. Happy days. So I got one more thing I can check. If I bring the clock down, just touch on the top of the drawer there. Let's just get it to read zero. Okay, so from there, at the top of the jaw, if I bring the quill down, make sure I don't crash the clock. That's very nearly the bottom. I got about 10 microns on that face. One line. Yeah. So, as it stands on the mill setup as I've got it, I'm about 10 microns off. Um, 10 microns off on the tram in the vertical that said i haven't trammed my head for quite some while but it's got no nod adjustment and i when i originally set it up and bolted it all down i got it pretty much within about 10 micron so it could be purely that could be the run out in my head or in my travel of my quill could be that 10 micron or it could be the jaw out but it's it's certainly much better than I thought it was going to be. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with that. So, just touch again. Okay, that's just on zero. And one line under. Okay, yeah. So, I think we can call it happy with that. I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, yeah, how rigid, how strong the vice is, I don't know. It's certainly going to be stronger and more rigid than the um, grinding vice that I've been using, the toolmaker's vice, um, you know, for heavy work. If I got down into the fine work, you know, and I wanted something bob on, you know, absolutely try and get it as perfect as I can get it, I'd probably swap back to my little grinding vice for small parts. And when I'm doing small parts, I might well swap back to that vice anyway. But for day to day, I think this is going to be a good addition. And of course, my parallel set fits a lot better with this vice than it does with the other vice, uh, size wise, you know, for the length of the parallels. So, uh, yeah, I think we've gone from a. Oh, where's my rule? Just got to measure my old vice. Uh, yeah, 75 mil up to 100 mil so you know we've we've gone an inch wider 25 mil wider um but when you compare let's get it no i really must give this a clean before i put it away so there's the old vice in its entirety let's come out let's give you a zoom out shot of this so as you can see that's the vice i've always been using um you know even though it's it's only 
this much wider, it's got a lot more scope and it's a lot heavier duty. Depth isn't much different. Um, what is the depth difference? Usable depth. Um, this one was 30, 35 mil, and this one actually only 30, so it's not as deep a vice as the grinding vice, but um, it is wider, and I'm sure it's going to be more rigid. Um, you know, for when I'm doing bigger cuts, bigger machining, larger parts, um, then I think this is going to be the boy. And then for the tiny little stuff that I do regularly, um, I can put the small vice back up. And again, this has the added advantage that I can put the small vice in this vice to set up angles and what have you. Whereas when I had the other vice on, I had to put the tiny vice in. Um, so at least I've got a I'll have a better grip on things when I want to set them up on angles by putting a vice in a vice. So yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. So the vice did come with these couple of, well, nasty T-bolts. They do fit my slot, um, but I prefer my sort of T-nut set uh, type, um, which came with washers and nuts, but they're only very thin nuts as well. Um, but they also came with two tenons and the screws to go in the bottom of the vice, should you want to set it up just using the tenons. I'm not a great fan of that. Um, but even saying that, I believe these are half inch wide and my T-slots are 12 mil. So these tenon nuts uh, or keys don't fit my T-slots. Um, so I would have to machine off one side here. So it would have to stay that width to fit the bottom of the vise. And then I'd have to step it to fit my table on one side just so that it was a good fit. Um, oh, you could step it either side, but one side probably would be all it needs. But yeah... Um, I can't see me using them, but I'm going to put the bag together, put them all back in the bag, chuck them in the drawer, and if I ever change my mind, I've got them. I've just taken out the little booklet, and uh, I've had quite a laugh. Um, you know, when you see a test certificate, you expect something handwritten, you know, what have you, that uh, an inspector has, uh, you know, tested and what have you. So anyway, it appears that they only test one in a hundred, so it's a sort of a statistical process control, and you get a photocopied one. Anyway, I, I just thought that, that some of it, it's quite a laugh. Um, so I'll just pan through this, but the, the English is astonishing. Um, yeah, it's um, the first line, this product is main attachments to precision millings grinders, no machines. <laughs> when active mouth of the tongs level migration, above it half spear can have vertical downward pressure. Therefore the clamp workpiece cannot surface the boat. I don't know where the boat comes into it. <laughs> the mouth of the tongs opens the opening to be possible to act according to four direction changes. <laughs> yep, uses and maintains. Advert middle has an adjuster bolt in active mouth of the tongs behind uses in eliminating the nut with pliers body between gap. Enable between both to have correct connection. If connects to I can't, I can't, it's just Oh anyway, that's that's one of the finest examples of Chinglish ever. Um yeah, I don't even know what they were trying to say. And another, you know, when you look at their inspection reports. Um, so, yeah, precision checklist. Um, one in a hundred survey lengths. So, yeah, they don't, they don't check every one. They don't send it through any form of metrology. They check one in a hundred. If it stays within their spec, they're happy enough. But to be brutally honest, or to be quite frank, it's not bad. You know, the, the dimensions are within what they've said, certainly. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it is what it is. Um, they... I think I'd rather not have this at all than what it actually says. <laughs> so, yeah, all in all, though, I'm happy with it. Well, there we are, guys, a little episode thrown in between Christmas and New Year. Um, I do hope you all had a very nice Christmas, and I do certainly wish you all a happy New Year. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you all very soon. Cheers now.